This is the third video of 2402 lecture over the heart. Uh, so let's go down microscopic here and talk about cardiac muscle. I'm not going to show it to you. You've seen it before. But uh, there's some characteristics there to it, which separate it from skeletal and smooth muscle. The key are these intercalated discs here, which are uh, little physical, electrical, and chemical connections between um, between the cells so that if you get an impulse down one cell, it's going to be transmitted to the next and so on. And it also acts to kind of staple them together with these different intercellular junctions, right? Remember, cap, gap junctions let stuff through, and uh, desmosomes are like staples. Uh, heart muscle cells are like a third, 25 to 35% mitochondria. That's a lot. There's only 2% mitochondria in skeletal muscle. Now, you can get a lot of aerobic activity out of skeletal muscle just fine, but uh, it can also run anaerobically pretty well for at least bursts. Uh, heart muscle, nah, not good at anaerobic at all. You have to have oxygen. This is why uh, you'll get heart attacks, but you never hear of quadriceps attacks, right? Like you never have, very rarely will skeletal muscle be deoxygenated and die, but you can get that much more easily with, uh, with heart muscle. But if you got oxygen going to it, it's really fatigue resistant. So that ability to aerobically respire keeps the heart beating uh, over and over and over and over and over, right? So some cells, especially in the nodes, which we'll talk about, are autorhythmic, which means that they will generate their own uh, depolarization and afterwards uh, will contract. So these autorhythmic cells are clustered in these nodes, which we'll see next. Uh, and they fire off such that the atria contract at the same time and then the ventricles contract at the same time. They atria go first, put blood into the ventricles, ventricles contract next, distribute blood to the arteries. Uh, this absolute refractory period, this is the amount of time it takes before the heart can beat again or before you can depolarize it at least again, which will then correlate with contraction. This is 250 milliseconds is a quarter of a second. So let's just let's just uh, simplify here and say if you can do a quarter of a second uh, and beat every quarter of a second, then you will be able to beat four times a second and 240 times a minute, which is more than you can do. But you're you can't contract, contract, contract. It's got to take a little break, so it prevents tetany. Tetany, sorry. A tetany is you can get that in your just tighten up your arm right now. Contract the muscles of your arms and lock them up. The, those muscles are experiencing tetany, sustained contraction, because skeletal muscle can go every one to two milliseconds, a lot faster than this. Why do you want really slow, uh, like a, a longer time between contractions with uh, cardiac muscle? Well, because unlike skeletal muscle, cardiac muscle has chambers that have to fill up with blood. So the fluids have to have time to get into the chambers before you can uh, contract them again. So this text page here describes the next image, which I'm clicking, I hope, and it's clicking, there it is. This is a the, the internal conduction system of the heart. So just point it out so I can go back and talk about it. Here's the pacemaker sinoatrial node. Uh, the AV node is right here. The sinoatrial node will depolarize, spreading the waves throughout the atria. It'll also send an impulse to the AV node, which then sends a depolarizing uh, wave, an action potential down this right here, which is called the uh, AV bundle. It branches into the AV bundle branches, right and left bundle branches, which then end up being distributed to the ventricular cardiac muscle via these guys called Purkinje fibers. I'm going to go with that name. Usually I go with the name that isn't some dead old white guy, but uh, in this case, Purkinje is a lot easier to remember than subendocardial conducting network. Although that's very descriptive. I'm going to be using Purkinje. Here it is in words. So it's a lot of words. Uh, sinoatrial node, that's the SA node, and that's the one I showed you in the upper outer wall of the right atrium. You got a basic heart rate of about 75 beats per minute, and uh, 
it's responsible for depolarizing and resulting in the contraction of the atrial cardiac muscle, myocardium, myo is muscle, cardium is heart. Uh, internodal pathway takes, I didn't explicitly say that, but this is the internodal pathway, oh, it's, it's labeled, which takes it to the AV node, which then uh, has cells which will delay for a moment, depolarize, supply the uh, ventricles with stimulus, and then here's those different ones. Uh, once you get to the apex of the muscle of the heart, the apex is that pointy tip at the bottom, uh, it contracts kind of like toothpaste tube, right? You want to squeeze it from the bottom and flatten it as you go up. You don't want to start squeezing up here and leave a bunch of toothpaste down in the bottom. Squeeze here and squoosh it out, and then it'll go out through these, uh, these vessels, right? The uh, aorta and pulmonary arteries. One last thing. Uh, you have in your medulla oblongata, you've got what are called cardioacceleratory and cardioinhibitory regions. They can alter that heart rate. So if you are meditating uh, and getting ready for bed, or you're very relaxed after eating, you're going to have the cardioinhibitory region kind of dominate and slow down your heart rate. If you're getting excited for a, you know, a, a sports competition that you're going to engage in or a speech that you have to give, you know, sometimes it's not necessarily beneficial to have your heart beating rapidly if you have to give speech. But if you're going to go, you know, play a pickup basketball game, yes, you want that region to dominate and get your heart rate up. Let me just check ahead here to one. Uh, I'll talk about this in the next video. So that's this video.